Welcome back to another video, everybody. Today we are going to be installing the last mod. That's right, unfortunately winter is here and all the scary things are here along with it. Salt, moisture, rust, that weird orange stuff that grows on cars around here. Yeah, so the time has come to shove this car into the corner under a cover and hide it from all that scary stuff. Before we're doing that though, we're gonna install some awesome, simple modifications that you guys can do to your Miata to make it that much better. Oi. Before you write that comment about, where's the built 1.6, watch the entire video. I talk about it at the end. I also show you guys a really cool new fabrication tool that I got in the end of the video. The cool thing about this video is that it is sponsored by Moss Miata. Just a clarification here, Moss did send me one of their shirts, but of course, the moment I got it, I started wearing it, and I ruined it by getting paint all over it, which is the story of my life, so. Moss Miata is a giant Miata store that has pretty much every single part for every single generation of Miata. I remember way back when, when your boy Jin Jin was in high school, this is way before I even had a Miata. I was sitting in the study hall, I was on Moss Miata, and I picked out every single part that I wanted to install on my Miata when I finally got it one day. Anyway, this is the care package from Moss Miata. Bunch of awesome stuff. Instead of showing you everything in the box right away, we're gonna go ahead and install it part by part and show you it part by part. I think we're gonna start with this. Let's talk about this. So as many of you guys know, we just recently got a new transmission for the car. The five speed said nope to 223 wheel horsepower and grenaded itself. Six speed was taken care of a little bit worse than the five speed and there's a little bit of schlop, schlop. There's a little bit of slop in the shifter. The other thing is that the shifter boots were worn and all torn up. So when you drive the car, all you smell is the wretched smell of gear fluid, which we all know is disgusting. So this is a rebuild kit for the shifter, but it isn't just any rebuild kit. This is an upgraded rebuild kit. So instead of the plastic shifter bushings that the transmission comes with, it has some nice upgraded bronze bushings. <laughs> So we got the old shifter and the old boots and then we have all the new goodies. So we got our shifter nice and clean, nice and bare. None of the old bushings are on there. It's time to reassemble it. I'm gonna start off with this upgraded bottom bushing. So this is what actually goes into the turret stock. It's this little piece of plastic. Upgraded is brass. Sorry, bronze. Bronze, not brass. Not the same thing, right? I don't know. Ready to go back into the car? As you can tell, the uh, the old one is quite a bit. Uh... <laughs> Ooh, which one do you think I should use? Shifter is all rebuilt. It certainly feels much better. It goes into uh, gears much nicer. Unfortunately, my shift boot doesn't really like reverse and six gear. It's starting to pull up up here. Old cars, man. You fix one problem and then another one arises. Anyway, what is so bad about this interior? Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, look at those nasty things, dude. These original floor mats from 1989. All hope is not lost though, because in this box, 
we got some new ones. I just found this underneath the floor mats. Is that not the most awesome thing or what? I know where this is going. <laughs> But those are the new floor mats. I know this might seem a little bit difficult to install, but I think you guys can figure it out. Man, that was hard. They are a slightly different color in this lighting, just because it's such a bright white light. Turn it off though. I promise it looks pretty much the exact same as the, uh, the stock carpet. Like here in the dark, it doesn't look so blue. And this is bright light. It looks kind of bluish. The one thing I will say is that those fit so well. They really fit better than stock. They hug the carpet perfectly and it's just, it's nice. You might be thinking to yourself like, Caleb, what's up? That, that interior is looking a little rough. You know, the, your steering wheel starting to wear, starting to kind of peel up a little bit. That seat, it's got some threads pulling up. It's got some tears and it looks a little sun, sun worn. And that radio, where is it? That switch panel, was that, is that the same switch panel you installed like three years ago and still doesn't do anything? Yes to all those things. See, during the two years where I daily drove this thing, it definitely put some wear and tear on the interior. That is the sad thing about daily driving a race car, ladies and gents. No matter how careful you are, you're definitely gonna wear some nice things. With that being said, during the revival of this car, when we get the new motor, we will be going over all those things. I really wanna get Lotus Elise seats. Those things look so good. I wanna get a new steering wheel. I wanna get a radio that can hook up to the Mega Squirt so I can see all my gauges. But of course, all in due time. Now, speaking of interior, we actually have more interior stuff. I didn't even really realize, but this is kind of just uh, an interior modification video. Now, currently I have some Garage Star hard top brackets in there. They're all right, but these ones are better. And I'll show you why in just a second. This is a little awkward. Um, so the Garage Star brackets hook up to this, just this little trim bolt. It's just a straight little piece that goes from there to there. And these Jazz Performance ones, obviously are much beefier. They go three different locations on the hard top and to two bigger locations on the actual chassis. But the problem is that these two bolts are for the side latches on the hard top. And I don't have those. Yeah. I was just trying to put these on there because these are much beefier. But alas, I can't. So um, pretty sure I can get some side brackets. It's actually a structural piece underneath the trim piece that's different. So I have to swap that out. But these are much beefier. If you're looking to get hard top brackets, definitely get these. All right, this is getting uh, even more awkward. Boss Miata sent me two horns, one to put on the rally Miata, one to put on Molly. How is that? Neither of the stock horns work. The reason why the horn doesn't work on this is because that energy short hub, the wire just ripped off, corroded, and therefore it doesn't work. So I need to get a new short hub on this car before I actually install it. So even though I can't install these right now, I'm gonna show them off and let you listen to them. Are uh, you ready, kids? Woo! Yeah, that's... Woo! Oh my goodness, that's, that's so horn. loud. Do it again. Oh, I have to plug my ears for that. That's awesome though. <coughs> that is so loud. Yeah. <laughs> my ears are, my ears like ring now. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely loud, it's our higher pitch. Yeah, higher pitch, slightly quieter. <laughs> Yellow and blue ones, I just realized the blue is perfect. Yellow and blue ones will go on Molly, red and black will go on the Rail Miata. I can't wait, lifted Rail Miata, open, dump, EJ20, with big old horns and big tires and lights. It's gonna be badass. Uh, here comes the last drive of the season. Well, I'll start off by apologizing for the lighting. It's winter. So that means it's four o'clock and the, the sun's setting. I always forget how much I like driving this car until I'm driving this car, which makes this last drive even more sad. This thing just feels so many millions times better than any of my cars. But let me show you why I can't drive it in winter. Zero traction. That was third gear, like partial throttle, and it's spinning. These, these are compound tires in this temperature, just 
don't do their job, obviously. As I was saying, this car is just so, oh, it just handles so well, and it's so responsive, and the, the flywheel is so light. And now the shifter is really awesome. The rebuild really made it miles better. Compare this to like the Subaru, which I've been daily driving. The Subaru, you know, it handles decently, but compared to this, the Subaru is a boat. The only redeeming factor about putting it away is that I don't have to wait all the way till spring. As soon as we're done with the Rally Miata swap, this thing's getting its new engine. We already have the engine, the engine's built, it just needs to go in. Hopefully sometime in January or February, we'll pull this thing out of its cover and we'll start doing the engine stop, start doing the overhaul. The sounds this thing makes, just everything is so good. And so that is it. Molly is away from all the winter. Is it bad that I'm actually genuinely like a, a little sad that it's winter and that I can't drive the car anymore? I don't think that's bad, right? That's, that's normal. It is what it is. At least we got to do some small improvements before we got rid of the car. Well, before we put it away. I guess we'll see Molly when we're ready to put the new motor in, which will be exciting, but a couple months, January, February. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for a while for the motor and you wanna see it now, but as I said, I really want to get those Rally Miata swap done. Speaking of which, without any further ado, let me show you this new tool that I got for the Rally Miata swap. This is it. This is the new fabrication tool. Well, one of two, but this is a beautiful Model 3 tube bender by JD Squared. It's an awesome tube bender. This is a legit tube bender. It's not one of those Harbor Freight crap things. This thing is legit. It'll look kind of foreign to you, but since I assembled everything, I actually kind of already understand how this works. Essentially, you put this tube in here, you bend it, it'll tell you exactly how many degrees you're bending it. So this will allow us to make a roll cage. It will allow us to make a tube front end. And then I also got a tube notcher from JD Squared. So this is really the key tool or key tools that will allow us to do the Rally Miata swap because obviously, I didn't want to do a tube front end or a roll cage with square tubing and <laughs> cuts. That would be kind of funny, but no, that's not, not how it works. I want to give a huge thanks to everyone on Patreon. I would not have been able to get this without all you guys. This plus the other thing was over $1,000. So, you know, nice fabrication tools are expensive. Yeah, you'll see this in future Rally Miata swap videos and really everything. I mean, we can make a roll cage for the truck, for Molly, for the Audi, which is being worked on, pretty much for everything. So it's gonna be really cool. Thank you again to everyone on Patreon. Hopefully this goes to show that when you become a patron, it actually helps. Like seriously, this is awesome. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Huge thank you to Moss Miata for all of the parts. You'll see them in future videos when we go to actually install the horns, when we actually install the hard top bra brackets. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to support the channel, help me get more tools like the tube bender, maybe more recording equipment, please go ahead over to Patreon and uh, support me there. Anyway, guys, thank you. Peace out. Goodbye.